Hello, Internet, and welcome back to Antiheroes Anonymous, or welcome for the first time if it's your first time joining us. I'm Ethan, and I'm the Dungeon Master for this 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons show! Uh, and boy, do we have Dungeons & Dragons to do today. Um, so, uh, we'll do a quick round of player introductions, then some announcements, and then a recap, and then we'll get right into the action. So, Nick, do you want to go ahead and start off those introductions? Sure. Hi, I'm Nick. I play uh, Thaddeus Hammerlock, the human Dungeons Paladin. I'm Kay, and I'm not ready. <laughs> I play Harmony, who is a tiefling wild magic sorcerer. And I'm Melissa, and I play Mara, who is a human squash club hero rogue. Hi, guys. I'm Zach, and I play Hunter, who's a warforged fighter ranger. Um, so we stream on Twitch every Monday at 7 p.m. Pacific time, and then post our episodes to YouTube the following Wednesday. Throughout the show, we use a variety of custom items, as well as a custom wild magic table, so be aware of that as you're watching. Our music comes from BattleBards Tabletop Audio and Game Copper Deck, and our character portrait, which you'll see in the top right corner on the character cards, uh, were drawn by an artist named Carrie Peach, who goes by at Carrie Draws on Twitter. If you're watching us on Twitch, you can check the channel page for links and info to everything I just mentioned and more. I feel like I missed something. <laughs> if you're watching us on YouTube, you can check the video description for similar information. Then you can always follow us on Twitter. Yes. I almost said Twitch. <laughs> you can follow us there too. Uh, yeah, at Antiheroes Anon if you want more information about what we're doing and when we're doing it. Uh, and other than that, we just hope you enjoy the show. Um, so, a quick recap and then we'll dive straight into things. The party uh, is working to recover the lost treasures um, of the Elderhaven Reaches, which are currently uh, housing the spirits, the, the great spirits of the country. Um, their first destination to uh, recover one of those artifacts was the Forest of Death. Uh, while they were there, they drove out an evil spirit uh, and claimed the sword Kusanagi, uh, the first of the relics, um, and thus freed the white tiger Byako from his uh, imprisonment, in a sense. Um, and then they then sailed uh, downward to an island below the one they were on, and up through rivers and a lake, uh, in between a forest known as the Sea of Petals, which perpetually bloom with cherry blossoms, um, and made their way up a mountain to an abandoned Tengu monastery. Inside the monastery, they found it was not actually so abandoned, uh, and they faced enthralled Tengu, slotty invaders, sentient furniture, and more. And um, yeah, more. But wait, that's not all. That's not all. <laughs> uh, they then found a key which granted them access to the upper levels of the monastery uh, and upon placing the key in the proper location were beamed via tractor beam, uh, this purple light that came down on top of them, up into the laboratory of their foe, Quor, the Warforged Mind Flayer. Um, and that is where we left off with Quor uh, entering each of your minds individually and uh, taunting you, saying that you will never make it to him, and even if you do, you won't uh, survive the encounter. Uh, and with that, the, mind, the voice in your mind went dark, went quiet, uh, and you're sort of left to your uh, own thoughts in this silent hallway, which is a strange sort of, you can see just ahead of you, it sort of curves out of sight a little bit, and then you can tell it curves again, just these gentle curves. The walls are decorated with um, these swirling, spirally patterns you saw in Helia Iron Shield's basement that you recognize to be signature of Illithid architecture. And the swirls are sort of laced with these veins of purple crystal that glow just faintly enough to uh, light this area with dim light. Um, but then lastly, uh, the floor is sort of covered uh, entirely with cables, metal, rubber, um, all manner of cables in different sizes and things like that, and they just seem to be running uh, into the walls and uh, out of sight. And that is where you find yourself. So I will get some music, and then it is up to you guys to get going. Alright. <laughs> so it looks like we have two pathways we can choose. Oh yeah, is there a... Well, no, I didn't cover the map very well. You have one pathway. We have one pathway. It looks like we have one pathway. <laughs> I guess... Uh... I guess our choice is made for us, then. Uh, well, we're just kind of 
curves up a little bit, um, and then you can see the curves again, and it's just this weird shaped hallway. So Ford knows we're here, but does that mean that everyone else is on high alert? Or should we? I think it's safe to assume. Okay, so there's no point in sneaking yeah. around? We could still try to sneak, because I mean, even if they know they're here, it doesn't necessarily mean they know, they know exactly, exactly where we are. All right. Well, then I'm going to cast Pass Without Trace. Okay. That's and, good. Uh, You're going to worry about running into the wrong hole of work where it's like, oh. So, Pass Without Trace Ooh, gives everyone oh. plus 10 to stealth checks. You don't have to roll, though. You're so good. <laughs> Thank you. I know. What's your stealth right now? I mean, so she does, it's not a proficient. Oh, it's not. She's never been proficient in stealth, oh. which I think is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Best rogue. Yeah. She's more of a pirate than a thief. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, I'll cast that, and then I guess we can stealthily move forward. Okay. Go sure. ahead and milk. Make milk. Milk your stealth checks. <laughs> um, Just do it. <laughs> I will do my very best. It's plus ten. We're off to a good start. Why did you have an argue of disadvantage? disadvantage. Okay. We're off cool. to a great start. Yeah. I rolled a one and a two. Oh. <laughs> Plus 10 then. <laughs> yes, which brings me to a 13. Wait, that's the. Uh, no, sorry, it brings me to an 11. Oh, okay. So, 22. Mine is. Mine's 28. Yako's is. Oh my gosh. Yako um, is invisible. He's, he got 40. 40. Okay. <laughs> I got 34. Can I go get the Mario got that? 34? 34? Yeah. Oh. oh, yeah, that one. You were almost a good Um, The group of you creep forward, and sort of at the end of that uh, second curve of the hallway, uh, you find yourself face to face with a uh, very shiny looking metal door that just sort of eerily reflects the pulsing purple light that courses through the veins of crystal that run through the hallway. Uh, and then to the side of the door, there is basically a, um, like a, a tablet built into the wall that seems to have just like uh, lines carved into it. Lines carved into it. Yeah, they're just like very plain, like straight lines and they'll, they'll break occasionally or is there some sort is of like? Is it fine now to use the object? I don't know. Is there you some sort of si significance? Sure, I'll take a look. Uh, make an intelligence check. Okay. Uh, I got a natural twenty. Okay. Um, as you, I need to make another natural twenty. As you approach the tablet, um, you begin to like as your eyes uh, fall onto the lines. It's uh, interesting because information begins to enter your brain, like, oh, on its own. Okay. Um, and as you are looking at it, you very clearly decipher what is um, written there in sort of like a psionic sense, um, is basically a series of instructions that is then conveyed to your brain um, on how to move tentacles standing before the door to get it to open. Okay, so there's like a demo bar where my head <laughs> completes. How to move tentacles. Move tentacles. How to move tentacles. Yep. Uh, basically, it's a list of instructions where you're okay. supposed to stand in front of the door and uh -huh. move tentacles in a like as if you if you had tentacles, move uh -huh. them in a specific way, and then the door would open. Do they have to interact with anything, or can it just be an illusion? Yeah. Do I understand? Yeah. Exactly. That information wouldn't be encoded in this tablet that you look at. So I'll relay that information. Because you've got that disguise hat you could try. Or the, I do it's have not that a hat. hat. No, it is a hat. It's it a, a really hat. big fancy hat. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, well, I don't have any other tentacle-like appendages, so I guess I will try the fancy hat. With your natural 20? Yeah. Uh, the one thing I'll remind you of is that since arriving at this monastery, you have killed something with tentacles. Which was the Warforged Mind Warforged Flyer Warforged. way down below. Oh, so we could go get it. Yeah. Oh, I see. So I guess we could do that. We could go retrieve. I could go real quick and something. But if you have yeah. other or solutions. Fatty can go on his yeah. steed. Oh, yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm a little strong, but I can yeah. probably carry something together. So I'll, I'll go get it. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, there's still. Um... Also, I'm scared, and I would like an excuse to not be here. <laughs> Are you still scared? Yeah. He's still at home. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm no not like this. frightened. I'm not a frightened condition, but I'm a little bit like terrified. Yeah. yeah, he might. You could fall out of the way. It's probably okay. not a bad idea. Uh, okay. Moonlight Sparkle is waiting for you, like just off to the side of like the porthole downward. Yeah, I don't think you can bring the sparkle in these chambers. Yeah. Uh, what's not drawn on the map is that there's sort of like an entryway where. Um, oh, there's like a hatch. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you can make your way back down to there, hop down onto Moonlight Sparkle, and then you just want to go. I want to go grab the corpse of the Warforged that we killed yep. and bring it back. Uh, so after maybe five minutes of sort of tense waiting, uh, Thaddeus and Mara and Moonlight Sparkle arrive again with this. Do you take the whole corpse? Uh, yeah, because I don't know. I didn't see Hunter's vision, so I don't really know what parts they need. Uh, so yeah, he shows up with a whole like Warforged Mind Flayer corpse, yeah. which is like a big hole in the chest where Mara electrified it with the dagger. <laughs> Do with this what you will. Okay, right. so I will take the body and move the tentacles. Wait, are there more than one? Is this the only door that we've encountered so far? Or is there any other this place? is the first door that you've seen so far, yeah. Alright, is there like a like name tag on this what room this is? Oh, actually, yes. Uh, okay. With your intelligence check, there's also a similar tablet above the door. Ah. Uh, um, and... Uh, with your intelligence check, you can this, the information does flow into you from that tablet as well, okay. uh, and it reads temporal load. Oh god, <laughs> I don't like this. Do we want to go in here? Is, is there any other option? I mean, there's a no. hallway, right? So isn't there a hallway? We're, we're, just we're, the we're at the door. We're right here. Oh, and yeah. does this not extend? Okay, that's just oh, never mind. Okay, so yeah, I guess this is it. Not <laughs> um, well. Everyone get ready, I guess. Mm -hmm. And I will try and move the Warforged tentacles yeah, in the correct assortment. With your check, as good as it was. Yeah, maybe I'll just like... Uh, you can do it, but you are going to need to direct someone else to help you, because you can only really move two of the tentacles on your own. <laughs> Alright, so I'll... I can use my I'll have, well, Thaddeus and Rob, so he doesn't really care, right? Probably, so I'll make it there. Thaddeus, do this and this with these ones, and we'll kind of pair up together. Yeah. Mara's a little bit more dexterous. Okay, Mara, come here. I need right. it. I can use my hand. You can do that, too. I don't know how many hands we need, but... You really just need another set of two hands. Alright, Mara, come here. Uh, can you make me a charisma check? <laughs> no. Oh, <wait. laughs> no. Uh, okay, that's not bad. That's an 18. 18? Okay. So then Mara, uh, based on his directions, which he gives, uh, it's hard because the information you received was like just knowledge transferred to you, and so mm -hmm. conveying that into words is difficult. Yeah. But with your... Um, I feel like I would like hold her too and do exactly like this, and I would take my advice. Like, you basically managed to convey the instructions yeah. easily, and then Mara, I just need you to make a dexterity check with a very low DC because of his charisma check. Oh yeah. Oh, oh no problem. As you finish completing the series of tentacle movements with the head, the door hisses open and it like fog rolls out and begins to fill the chamber a little bit. Uh, and you can see that it basically clings to the floor in this room um, that you are entering, uh, which is an irregularly shaped room uh, in the bottom. Hmm? I hate fog. I it's water. not, it doesn't obscure sight, <laughs> it just kind of covers up. Like we've had our fill of fog. It covers like the bottom inch of the chamber, basically. Um, <laughs> just complaining about fog. <laughs> Upon entering this room, Black or fog. even just opening the door, fog. as the fog rolls out, you also be, all begin to hear, like in the back of your brains, just incessant whispers of many, many voices. Uh, and as you look into the room, lit by the same dim purple light, uh, what you see are shelves lining the wall, uh, which are covered with brains in jars, like human brains intact in jars of like greens and purple and red liquid, and they are just lining the shelves in this room. And then piled up in the center of it is a series of um, haphazardly stacked books surrounding a, what looks like a work desk. Um, 
And that's most of this room. And then on the far end of the chamber, you can see a similar door to the one you just entered. We get to uncover our room. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, so here you have the desk, stacks of books, and then brains lining the walls, and that door here. Okay. Are there any people in there? Uh, the room looks empty. Can I do a perception check and look for people or listen for people? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, I just need you to make it at disadvantage because the constant whispering in the back of your brain, just as you begin to try and focus and look around, it just becomes this like battle blocking your stream of concentration. Does Yako also have? Yeah. Do we all hear the whispering or just have to all of you hear it? Does Yako also? Yako also does. Okay, so I'll be at disadvantage. That is well. <laughs> do I? Still... Uh, disadvantage, but then we do the passive, or should I just give you the roll? Uh, so, give me the roll in this case because you are at okay. like a specific. So I disadvantage. got a nine. A nine. And Biako got a. She's also at disadvantage. Uh, he gets advantage though. Oh, because of the mm -hmm. uh, Let's say plus twelve. I think so. Seventeen. Yes, seventeen. Um, Biako takes a look around the room, kind of. Puts his nose up into the air and sniffs, and he he growls a little bit, but he's not looking at anything in specific. And uh, Hunter, knowing your animal companion as well as you do, you recognize that to mean there's nothing in this room, but it like he smells the scent of your enemies here, like they've been here for. Okay. Um, what, what are these two blocks? Are these those are the stacks, the okay. huge okay. stacks of books. Can I mage hand one of the books off of the stack and bring it to me and see what it is? <laughs> um, you bring it in front of your face and it looks to be a wizard spell book of some kind. You kind of leaf through it with mage hand um, and there are just spells and equations and things written in it. Mm, boring stuff. Mm. If we can hear the brain's whispering, can we communicate with that? Do you want to try and like think a message back to it? Why not? What do you want to think to it? How long have you been here? Um, make me a charisma check. Yes. Actually, intelligence. Sorry. Oh, no. Not intelligence. <laughs> charisma is so much better. Six. Six. Um, you sort of stand slightly in front of one of the brains and try and focus this thought into it, um, but you're not able to project, project your thoughts out into it, unfortunately. Okay, somebody else try. Come on, guys. Try to talk to it. Um, I'll try. Addison's read a book recently. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually yeah. true. He did. Yeah. <laughs> so make an intelligence check. Okay. 16. Okay. Uh, what do you what do you try and say to it? Um, I guess I'll try to say even though even though I know the answer is just like an exploratory question, like who did this to you? Um, as you project that thought out with all of the mental uh, ability that you have, um, the whispering in your head gets louder and louder for a second until a lot of the whispers fade away and you're just hearing one voice. Um, and instinctively you know that it is coming from the brain in the jar that you are faced with, and it's just kind of this um, lump of, of brain matter in a like purple liquid, and it's just sort of bobbing up and down as bubbles go up and down in the jar. Um, and you hear that voice, and it's a, sort of a woman's voice, uh, comes into your head clearly and says, Did, did what to me? I don't, I don't understand. It's, it's terrifying. It's dark. What's going on? Who are you? Where am I? It feels like I've been here for so long. They're all still alive and they have no idea what happened. They're still alive. <laughs> mm. are, are you still there? I. Hold on. I'm alone again. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll predict. Hold on. We'll be back soon. No, Eddie, you hear it like in your head. It's like, no, don't go! Please! 
and then like as you try and like sever the, yeah. the connection with it, it like goes back to the babble of all of them. So we've entered the room, I assume. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In there yeah. talking to brains. Right. Yeah, we should put ourselves in there. I was kind of hanging back to see if someone wanted to uh, check for traps or something, but since no, you guys we, are already in the room. We kind of just don't do that at, <laughs> in this party. Can I go up to the work desk and kind of check it out, see what's on it, and if there are drawers? Yeah, I'd be I want to rifle too. through all the drawers. And... Yeah. Uh, so sitting on the desk is a stone tablet inscribed with some of those similar lines that the, the door was. Um, I hand it to Hunter, and I keep looking. Okay. <laughs> I will look at the instructions. Uh, and then you rifle through the drawers as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, in one of the drawers, there's like papers and things like that, but they're all just like, they look like they were torn out of the piles of books that you see, because they're just like wizard spells and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but buried under all of those papers, in one of the bottom drawers, uh, you find a letter, uh, which its seal is broken. Um, and you can easily pull out its contents if you want to. I do. Um, It's a long letter, uh, but it's written in handwriting that you may recognize. So make a, just an intelligence check to see if you recognize it. It's It's like you're in Mind Flayer's lair, I guess. Uh, 18. 18, yeah. Um, You've seen this handwriting before and you recognize it to be Oren's handwriting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, I hope. And I didn't write out a specific letter exactly, but it contains this in, in a summary, uh, because it's a very long, several-page letter. Um, it mentions uh, having captured uh, someone they think will be keen to creating the Warforged army that they envision, uh, and they want, and uh, as you read over that bit, you see that it is uh, Zant that they're talking about. And then it goes on, Oren goes on to explain how he wants to use Zant's specific uh, combat training and memory as sort of a template for the Warforged uh, uh, programming, uh, so that they will all have a base of combat knowledge, even if, like, uh, the soul that is forced into the Warforged did not to begin with. Um, then there's also a note about um, an artificer named Potix. He's referenced as, like, a contractor with Thimblefoot, uh, having some success with the control chip that they want to create. Um, essentially using his alchemy skill to distill some of Orochi's essence into a mechanical chip and fuse the two, allowing for complete control. And then there's an aside where Oren just sort of casually says, um, one of the demerits of this process is that Orochi's sanctum must be kept open constantly, which will require one of the two priestesses to be there at all times. And then it elaborates a little bit to say, um, or it then asks for Gore's opinions on how to handle that, uh, and then clarifies at the end that they need to be extremely careful because those two specifically have the potential to take away all that Orochi has given to Or. And that is the gist of the letter. You said two priestesses mm-hmm. that are on guard at the same time. At least one of the two is always there. Okay. And then it asks for Kor's opinions on how to handle that situation um, because of the danger the two innately possess to the power that Orochi, or Orochi has given to Oren. And you said that, um, sorry, because I was trying to work as quickly as I did, mm-hmm. that um, Kotex was fusing Orochi's essence with the control chip? Yep, using okay. his alchemy. Okay. I'm gonna give this letter to Hunter too, without okay. really saying anything to the others. I mean, Do I know me. who the priestesses are? Uh, yes, you would. Are they siblings of mine? It would be your mother and sister were the two priestesses okay. that were responsible with keeping Orochi's sanctum sealed. Mm, I see. So I'll like turn to Harvey and say, uh, 
These two are my family members. It sounds like they're still alive. I would hope so. If they need to be there protecting the, the sanctum. Well, this is also a somewhat dated letter, letter right? Because... He had mentioned codex and still dated. Yeah. So yeah, that was out of character. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, so that some time has passed. Sorry, I m might have misunderstood what Ethan was saying. But I was, my interpretation was because the sanctum has to be open at all times in order to use the process mm -hmm. to create the chip, that meant that one of the two priestesses had to always be there to guard it. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily guard it, but they had to be present to like keep the door open okay. to the sanctum. Okay, mm -hmm. so that means you, they're still making Warforged. Yeah. They're still making chips. So at least one of them is still alive. Yeah, that's true. That's, that's good. Hopefully both. Hopefully both, because yeah. they could do it in chips or whatever, but... Yeah. Well... But they also pose a threat to Orin. Right. So they could be allies. They should be. For us. Yeah. I would hope so. Um, do I learn anything from the instructions? Uh, you need to make a new intelligence check. Alright. Uh, that is a 19. Oh, you did it. You were pretty close. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> um, yes, as you focus on the tablet, this time it, the strain is a little bit more as it enters your mind, and you get a little bit of a headache, but nothing major, and the information does slowly flow into your brain. Uh, and you recognize that um, these are research notes, um, specifically about necromantic magic, uh, and Kor, you, you gather that it was created by Kor, um, and uh, the information that you glean from there is that he was trying to use um, things he learned from Yin, who you yep. remember is the necromancy master of the Assembly of Eight or whatever. Um, I wonder what happened to that guy. Well, right? he must—he must have had his brain taken because oh, that's how. The, uh, that's how Kor has been learning all of the magics. Philip said that he was like, he thought that they were all dead at this point. Yeah, it's true. So, he was absorbing all of the. Yeah, so I can assume that he's dead, but I don't know. Um, he was trying to use information gleaned from Yin to uh, perform necromantic rituals and experiments on uh, what's referred to in there as just tadpoles. Tadpoles? Um, and to what effect? It's a little bit unclear, because it just basically describes the things he has tried and whether they worked or not, or not and none of them seem to have worked. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. The tadpoles, out of, the brains? No, out of character, I think that what's going on. That's just because I know I'm out of my words. You think what? I think I know what he's, what oh, he's trying think to do. Oh, you think you know what's going on. I yeah. thought you actually told us what's going on. You guys have <laughs> learned... That, Thaddeus this. doesn't know, but I know. Yeah. You guys have learned at this point a few things about my players. You could make like an Arcana check. Oh, okay. Sure, sure. To try and modify well, your... Have we shared this out of game knowledge? knowledge? You know, like yeah. you would once they're done talking with brains. Okay. Yeah. Brownie, did you know that you're such a brain man? Uh, it's an 18. 18. Um, knowing what you know about Kaur's backstory, mm -hmm. uh, which is that he mentioned one time that he was left behind by his race. Mm -hmm. um, and knowing what you know about mind flayers and the little bits you've gleaned about how they work, um, it is possible that he is trying to use magic to find a new way to make his own Mind Flayer colony. I figure he's probably got some old mummified remains of whatever these tadpoles are, young young Mind Flayers. And I mean, I can I know one way at least to to a spell to raise the dead very quickly if they've not been dead long. It's a necromancy spell. So mm -hmm. I see. Uh, are these notes, can we tell if they're dated pretty far back? Or There's they... no dates assigned to them. Okay. Well, nothing left to do here. We might as well just move on. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. 
Okay, so you want to... There's just this one exit, right? Yep. Okay, apart, apart from the way we came. Uh, so above that door, this is a very similar, like, uh, shiny metal looking door. That is goes and drags over the... Yep. <laughs> Mine's fine. Yeah. Should we just make this easier on ourselves and cut it, maybe? So we have to drag the whole body? What if we need more of it? I mean, I guess that's a good point. Alright, we can bring the whole thing with us. It's so more I love it. Oh, what does the sign say in under? Make it intelligent. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> do, you want, do you want help with this? Sure. Okay. Yeah, all of you have sort of seen how this works, so yeah. Thaddeus, if you want to step up and try and help with it, sure. that's fine. Help is in two? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, ooh, I don't think I made it this one. Mm -mm. That's yeah. a 12. Uh, 12. Can both of you, since you're sort of puzzling over this together, make a wisdom saving throw? Okay. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, you have plus five for this. Okay. Go ahead. I got a 26. I got a... Plus how much? Plus five. 16. Okay, so 16 and 26, 26. you said? Yeah. Okay, so both of you pass. Do you have any bonus to your wisdom saving? I just have plus two and then pluses. Then there's just a sharp jolt of pain, uh, and you each take uh, three points of psychic damage. Ouch. Um, I think and it's sorry. All that the two of you are able to glean from it is that it is another description of like tentacle movements. Um, and I'll give you the the plate above the door reads mm -hmm. frontal lobe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just thought Surprised you have much wisdom. 14. That's pretty low. Versus pretty low. Yeah. Because I have observant and yeah. a fetch hand, so. <laughs> Makes sense. Yeah. Um, well, no, I, I don't know. I'm drawing a blank on this one. Do you also want to give this guy? Careful, so. I thought you didn't get to read it. Hmm? We only read the. Book. We don't know the technical position. Yeah, so. Oh, no, the specific oh, yeah. instructions. Yeah. Do I need to get out and move my lock picks out? There is no visible lock on the door. It's just like two seamless slabs of metal that come together. We don't still have that scroll. Do we have a knock? No, we used it. No, we used it. In that tower. Mm. So there's not even a, like an inch at the bottom open? Nope. Well, I don't think Mara is going to have much luck. <laughs> Do you, you want to give it a shot? I... I mean, I can, but I'm not really good at this kind of thing. I mean, I could try again, but... I'll, I'll help. Maybe yeah, it's worth a try. Okay. I think that Harvey just has eyes and help me score the whole thing. No, <laughs> my intelligence is only 14. Yeah, we're the same. Yeah. Okay, 18. Okay. Uh, there is, again, you feel like the slow transfer of knowledge to your brain um, as you basically begin to see in your mind's eye uh, a series of tentacle movements so that you weird. could make with a mind flayer head if you wanted to. This is so weird. Can I do all of the tentacles at once with telekinesis? Uh, yeah, probably just with one. telekinesis you probably could. Yeah, okay. I'll be like, okay, Hunter, hold it up. <laughs> and we'll just do it with telekinesis. <laughs> Uh, and the door psh, slides open, and again, the mist kind of rolls into the next room, uh, which I want to take the papers off. Yes. This Still not a fan. He tried to grab the phone, but he missed. Oh. She's making up for a week of not being here. Um, <laughs> as you look into this room, uh, you are greeted by a series of rows of um, cylinders that stick up from the ground and rise up to the ceiling. Uh, they have metal bases at the bottom, which cables and things connect to, uh, and then they have a, like a glass center, uh, which is filled with bubbling liquid of various colors. Uh, and within, you see the nude forms of human bodies. Um, and why don't each of you make a perception check? No longer at disadvantage, since you're leaving behind okay. the brain room. Is this a uh, perception with sight or hearing? With sight. Okay. Uh, and then the last thing you see around this room as you're making those checks uh, is that there are shelves lining the room, mm -hmm. and they are 
pockmarked, not really filled, uh, but in occasional places you can see there are jars, uh, stoppered jars with swirling purple mist in them. Okay. So, All right. not good. Hunter got a natural 20, which turns into. This is a 27. Okay. No, more than that. It's a 32. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. And then, um, Bianco got a. A 25. Okay. Then it's a 10. 15. 15 for Mara? 20. 21. Which I was proud of until Hunter <laughs> Hunter, Yako, and Thaddeus all notice the perceptive boys today. Um, a couple things. Sitting to the very left and right of the door, which you kind of wouldn't see unless you were looking at it from an angle, mm -hmm. uh, there are two, uh, at first you think they're Warforged Mind Flayers, but you realize very quickly they're stat like metal statues of Mind Flayers with their tentacles outstretched towards the door. So they're sort of flanking the way into this room. Mm -hmm. um, the next thing you realize is that each of the bodies, though they're at different ages, each of the bodies in the canisters is foreign. Oh, <laughs> oh wow. wow. So those squares next to the door are the- Are the place. statues. Yep. Okay. And then the circles throughout the room are all of these canisters that each contain a body of Orin at different ages. Some of them How very young many of them looking. Are there? Uh, you can count. 16? No. 17. That was so passive aggressive. You can count. I drew them all on their bits. <laughs> there's, there's also one other thing I have to describe, uh, which is that the group of you see that hiding behind one of the uh, far canisters, and actually, I was expecting a really big one to be the orange dozer. What does it explain how he came back to life after we killed him? Uh, yeah, 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 probably. And why he yeah. was he hiding different behind a canister Sorry. there is a warforged mind flayer in a black cloak, uh, who seems to be watching you all carefully and doesn't seem to have noticed that you've noticed it. That is does something ridiculous, which is he gets down on his belly and starts crawling into the room. <laughs> what? Why? <laughs> and like points up at the statues as he goes. At the statues? Yeah. Or yeah. The on either side of the door. One. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, I don't care about the actual one in the room. He's just marking one shot or whatever. I'm just worried about getting. Him. I like drinking. All right. Uh, where do you where do you crawl to into the room before I you mean, like turn around? And I just push? want to get past the statues. Okay. And get to about like here. Okay. Yeah, you crawl into there and sort of like stand up. Can I in, like check the statues for traps? Yeah, make an arcana check. Okay. If they're not. Or did you want like physical traps? I mean, any trap. Arcana makes sense for me. Oh, okay. Nice. Uh, twenty-two. 22. Um, yeah, you detect a faint, um, like, aura of magic, like a faint tingling of it, um, around sort of the heads and tentacles of the statues. That's what I was trying to avoid. Can okay. I... So, neither of you who have seen this Warforge have told us that I, I was just going to, but we were still there. rolling and stuff, yeah. so once we get a... Because uh, yeah. if he just starts crawling in, <laughs> and I detect that there is a trap, I want to use telekinesis to knock one into the other and try so, to destroy them. Oh, okay, interesting. I would. I think once he gets on the ground and starts crawling, I would say there's another. There's a mind player over there. I yeah. Find out. Oh shit. I see it. Oh, no, I'm talking no, about it. Tell, telling the yeah, ones yeah. who didn't roll I over like, twenty of like, his perception. I would, I would message <laughs> each of you individually. Okay, say my player. Okay, I'm ready. I yeah, I'm still gonna do it. Right. I'm still yeah. gonna knock this right. one statue over into right. the other. Okay, make a charisma check because as you begin to pull on it with telekinesis, it is strongly anchored to the ground. <sighs> Just straight charisma. Yep. Natural 20? Okay, yep. Oh my With yeah. a tearing metal sound, you throw it into the other statue with enough force that the other statue then is uprooted from the excuse me. From the ground and thrown against a bookshelf where nice. one of the uh 
the jars that is stoppered with the purple mist kind of falls to the ground and then shatters, the purple mist dissipating. Uh, As I do this, or right before I do it, when you point out, you're like, mind flare. I'm like, God, I hate mind flares! And I just <laughs> shut them. <laughs> I'm so tired of mind flares! Okay. Uh, are you still on the ground at this point? No, I got up. I got up. You got up, okay. Yeah. I'm going to throw one of my daggers at that guy. He's currently like, behind total cover. Like, okay. you couldn't... Wait, total cover? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to just walk into the room. Okay. Stride in behind Thaddeus. Behind Thaddeus. And look for the mind player. Okay, roll a perception check. That they say is there. The rest of you are still hanging back in the... No, I'll come with Harmony. I'll keep going in. <laughs> um... And does Biakko sort of accompany you? Did. I really did. I did. As you stride up next to Thaddeus, you also spot the Mind Flare. Hunter now, comes though? with you. Biakko comes with. I'm going to, yeah. Mara as well. As soon as Mara crosses the threshold behind uh, the group of you, Mind Flare seems as if it's like finally seen what it was looking for, and it presses a button on a console that it was holding. Oh no. Uh, and uh, the mist that was covering the floor kind of flows out of the room, and you can see that you're standing on a grate, a uh, metal grate over this black liquid, which begins to churn and bubble, and black oh rubbery tentacles <laughs> shoot up throughout this entire room uh-huh. and begin to grasp at all of you, and I need you to roll initiative. Okay. Wow. I was going to hold monster on that shit. As it, with uh, my natural 20 of perception. Uh, uh, initiative. Yeah. All right. No, go ahead. I, I need another part of mine. Yeah, that's not too bad. <laughs> At the end, it's on the bottom. I feel like I hit that number a lot. I always forget. Yeah, I think it's my bonus right now. But I don't think so. Hey, we're, we're tied. I told you. I'm lucky. Um, but the thing is, I rolled an 11, and you rolled <laughs> a 5. <laughs> but you still go first, because your deck score is higher than mine. I I'm putting that in order for you. When he says it like that, are you going into? I'm like, yeah. it's, a right now, it's a trap. It's a trap. Well, see, that's the other thing. I was gonna walk in, do my perception score, and then do bold monster, but like y'all interrupted me again. So that's fine. Let's fuck this motherfucker up. Well, if he wants to fight, let's give him a fight first. I'm eager for a fight. <sighs> so there's tentacles everywhere. everywhere. <laughs> You're going first anyway, right? Just shoot. No, she's not. No. No. no okay. I feel like, you know, without this um, ooze underneath, it feels like I'm not shit anymore. <laughs> I had a fistful of skulls like, anyway. With like cracking all around. Okay, so first things first. Um, none of you are surprised by this guy, so it's not a surprise round, but we are going to start at his turn uh, because he pushed the button That's to do something. Uh, and so on his turn, the room, <laughs> the black liquid under the um, grate bubbles and boils and bursts up in these, uh, like, cohesive tentacles which begin to grasp at you and I need each of you in the room to make a dexterity saving throw and you all get that ace as well. Yeah. Which is plus five. Plus five. This means you can use evasion. This means I get a plus five to my roll too. <laughs> Classic that so is dexterity. Uh, I got plus five. Plus five. A, yeah. And you're proficient, right? I got a 19. Yeah, so it's, like, it's a 10 minimum. So. Yeah, that's only an ability. <laughs> <laughs> Mara rolled a natural 20. 35. Plus 15. No damage. <laughs> <laughs> Mara's not even in the room anymore. Uh, okay, so Mara saved. Oh, no problem. 19. 19? Okay. Is that a save or? Uh, 19 is a pass. Yes. Okay, so Should Bianca I... passed too. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna I'm gonna tags of chaos this. Okay. <laughs> Ten. Ten. Okay, that's a failure. Yeah. Seven. Seven. Okay. Wow. Uh, so harmony and Thaddeus both fail. So you guys take uh, as these tentacles coalesce in the room, uh, thirteen points of bludgeoning damage, 
and are restrained by these oily tentacles that just sort of grab onto you. And it's like it's water, but it's, it's liquid, but it's also solid. It's almost like an ooze in quality, which just lashes onto you. Uh, Ethan, yeah. these <laughs> tentacles count as objects. Uh, no. Okay. Yako. You mean me? Nope, Yako, because we started with the mind players initially. Oh, so we just cut into the, mm -hmm. the stack? Oh, interesting. Okay, so Yako is going to pounce at the tentacle that's on Harmony and try and break her. Oh, okay. Uh, have him make a athletics check. Okay. Thanks. That is a 16. Uh, yeah, he slashes through the tentacle and disperses the liquid, which then uh, bursts off of Harmony, freeing her. Thank you. Uh, but then the liquid falls back into the, the, the grate below and then begins to coalesce into another tentacle. How mm. big is this grate? Uh, like, is like it the entire room? It's basically the entire room. Like these canisters are all resting in. So this entire room is filled with these tentacles. All right. Uh, and then at the end of, does Biako have anything else he wants to do? Uh, does that count as his action, his attack yeah. action? Then he doesn't really have much else. Um, I yeah. guess he can. Does he have enough movement to get to the next with the mind player? Uh, Probably not. Yeah, he can start it up. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, he can. Okay. So he's gonna do that then. It's gonna go over here. Okay, and then he needs to make that save again, the next turn. Oh, next turn against? Okay. So let's say. Is that dexterity save at where he was or where he is now? Where he is now. Okay. So he doesn't get that use his bonus time. So that is eighteen? Eighteen, yeah, he's fine. He dodges and weaves between these tentacles that form up behind him and then crash down back into the rake. Then it is Thaddeus' turn. Alright. Um, can I... I'm restrained. Can I use an action to try and free myself? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what would that look like? Is that a strength check? Or can the, I try attacking? Yeah, an athletics check. Or, or an acrobatics check. Or can I try attacking the tentacle? Uh, yeah, you could try and do that. That's what, so what, did, what did... What did... Um, yeah, athletics. Oh, that's yeah. what I had to do? Okay, then yeah. let's go with that. Okay. Uh, that's good. Cool. I'll do that. Huh? Uh, 21. Yep, you hack through the tentacle and it disperses again, freeing oh, yourself. Yeah, he started in the middle of the stack. Yeah, but right Yaku... where the player was. And Yaku oh, was I thought well. Yaku was higher than that. But WFMF was at 12. So, and then Yaku was at 9. <laughs> Sorry, I because I was putting them in order and I, I remember putting your numbers, yeah. Yeah. but it was you. Yeah. Sorry. I'm not used to Biako having such a low initiative. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> but it was good this time. To break free, I think that only takes one of your attack actions. Oh, okay. Probably. So you will still have the other one if you like. Nice. Yeah, I'll use that. <laughs> so I got a one. Oh, no. That's one. one. Okay. Uh, yeah, you go to swing it, and oh, like, one of those tentacles rears up for the, through the grate and like swallows your arm for a brief moment before you call it free. Gross. But the attack goes to waste. Excuse me, I gotta get fish on the trash. Uh, Hunter, <laughs> now it is your turn. <laughs> okay, uh, I will... Is he still in full cover right now? From you, yes. Yeah. Are you restrained now? You're not no. restrained. You can move. Yeah, I will move. Do it. I will move over here. <laughs> there? Is that okay? Yep, that's fine. He'll still have, well, he would have half cover, but if you're going to shoot him, you will not. Yeah, I will. So I will make uh, three shots at advantage against him. And yeah, let's do it. Let's see. Mario over there. That is. I don't think. I think we got rid of that. We got rid of the functionality that 19s get critical hits, right? Yeah, okay. So that's a 19 on dice plus 13. So that's 30. Hit yeah, for sure. And then that's another 19 on dice. And then that's a well, that's pretty low. That is a. So that's only a. Uh, so 13 to hit for the last one. Uh, the 13 does not hit. Okay. Well, two shots at him. 17, 
plus. I like what he has to do now. Seventeen plus thirty-six. It plus thirty-six. So it's one of his. Yeah. Right. Fifty-four. Yeah. No. Yeah, yes. Fifty-three. Yeah, fifty-three. Oh, okay. Yeah, fifty-three. Whew! He doesn't like that. He's got two big arrows sticking into him, and he's just like reeling backwards from the two shots. Okay. That's my turn. Uh, then, um. This is a Warforged melee, right? Yes. Yeah, that's right, there are two A shimmering wall of force <laughs> appears and sort of enshrouds the Mind Flayer. Um, is this a spell that he's casting? It is not. You don't see any origin for the spell. But a wall of force just sort of appears here. Oh. That's awkward. Hmm. Uh, and you can just barely see the shimmering sparkles of magic in the air, but you've seen the spell cast before, the Wall of Force spell, and you recognize it. Yeah. That is what it is, but you don't see anyone cast it. Uh, well, that's bullshit. What does it do? I don't know what the Wall of Force does. Um, you, just, you can't cross it, you can't go through it. Yeah, you saw this back in like the Temple of the Raven Queen, when Poor put one up between you to try and stop you from passing oh, it, but yeah, yeah. he used like misty stuff to get past it, uh, and so it wasn't very effective on at that point in time. Can you cast spells for it? I think I found an arrow that clattered, right? The arrow didn't go through. So like physical things can't go through. That is all that happens then. Then it is Mara's turn. Um, what are... You said that all these canisters have glass cylinders on them. Mm -hmm. What are the cylinders made of on the outside? Uh, there's like a metal at the top and the bottom which seem to be holding these glass canisters in which there are the bodies of four. Okay, so is it possible to tip one over and I kick really hard? They're, they look pretty anchored to the ceiling and the floor by those like metal parts at the top and bottom. So they're not just freestanding pillars, they're like columns. Yeah, okay, they're thinking, anchored to the ceiling. I was wondering if there were like cords or something that I could like uh, slash through and kind of uh, uh, no. tip over. Okay, but since I can't like throw my daggers at this guy. You could, um, you're, I don't want to I know, but I was going to, you could also, to try to get rid of these little body things. You I mean, could also thunderstep through the barrier probably, right? Yeah, but she'd have to make sure that we're not within the range. I would just understand. say, take me with you. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go together. Yeah, you could do that. Just make sure you don't hit me with the thunder. Yeah, you'd have to walk okay, a little bit away. No, you don't. I mean, that's... No, that sounds fun. I like right that is. idea. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it like a tip? Put, I have my gloves and pistols um, snaring on, too, your... in case of those. Oh, yeah. You just grab the tip. Where's your, your neck? I'm here? looking for it. The thunder stamp is right here. I think you've worked with one you're fine. Yeah, 10 feet. I have to make a save. So yeah, you so walk. she goes around the Yeah, I would like hold my hand out. So let's, let's go, Mara. And then the two of you are going to teleport into that wall of force? Yes. Sure. Uh, with a echoing <laughs> of thunder. Does it break any of the canisters? It does indeed. That's what I was about to say. Yeah! Uh, That's she looks cute. Yeah, yeah okay. right there, Reaper. Yeah. Now we're working yeah. the wall of force. You broke the canyon nice. and you're next to him. <laughs> nice! Uh, you broke the wall. The glass shatters as Harmony as uh, Mara's thunderous spell echoes throughout the room, and Harmony, you are buffeted by a deluge of water. Ew. And also, <laughs> and also uh, the body that was in the one next to you falls out on top of you almost. Uh, maybe Ew. next thirty seconds. Hit by a body. Oh. Naked orange <laughs> Just what you wanted tonight, right? I don't get fatties on this anymore, do no, I? No, I'm over here. Is slimy orange parts. Fifteen? Fifteen, yeah. You duck out of the way and it slam it slaps the ground with a wet thud in front of you. I like kick it. Like face down. So like push it away from me. A wet thud. With my foot. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and then Mara, that was your action. Anything else you want to do? Uh, I guess we better race ourselves. So I'm gonna stay right here so I can help. Okay. Then it is Harmony. Cool. Um, that was cute. Yeah, so I am going to <laughs> <laughs> step <laughs> over this body and make sure I'm, I can see the mind player. Yes. Yeah, so Although I guess so... I can see him from there ish. 
Ish. Yeah. Yeah, maybe I'll just move diagonally like here. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going to cast Suggestion on him. Okay. And I'm going to say, hey, Ugly, I suggest you make these tentacles stop attacking right now. Uh, what is the save? Is Wisdom. it Wisdom? And my DC is 20, bitch! 20, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, he's... Uh, but he only rolled a ten, uh, and so he like he looks down at the, like the console in his hand and like moves to push the button, and he will on his turn. Also, he tides of chaos with prime. So cool. So, sonic damage. That's the thing that Break happens. everything. You feel the wild magic surge. Well, you're over there. there. Yep, I'm by myself. So it's like a four bird. Now we're away from harmony. So we get wet. <laughs> yeah, I mean, broke so, all the things. So we're both in, you're in melee and I'm in melee. This is great. Oh, behind a wall of forest. We're, right <laughs> about to we're protected from harmony. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. That was the best yeah, turn yeah, I've yeah. ever seen. Best turn. Mm-hmm. Nice execution. Oh, we've done we've done fifty-seven before. So let's do forty-seven. Okay. Uh, trick, 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 trick. Nah. This uh, one's gonna be kind of Yeah, fun. you guys, as you sort of turn around and see Harmony's wild magic surge around her, just basically see wind pick up behind her and it just blows her dress and her hair and billows behind her and makes her look incredibly powerful. I am such a badass, y'all. Um, is it suggestion is audible, not telekinetic, right? It's audible, yeah. Okay, so I'd like to look, if I can, at his controller and see what he's doing on his turn. It's just one big button. Oh, it's just a big button? Yeah. I thought it was like knobs. So it's, like, so it's like the button is just labeled on slash off. Okay. Uh, I've only okay. used five feet of movement, so I'm going to run and hide behind the far pillar in the corner. I, nope, the other one. Here. Yep. Okay. Um, the one thing I just remembered I need uh, Thaddeus, Hunter, and Mara, since you've taken your turns. Uh, to make dexterity saving throws along with harmony okay. um, for the tentacles. Fortunately, we're right. all within our arm. Is it pretty much every, every time we move, we have to do that? That's yeah. just at the end of each turn. Oh, at the end of each turn. Okay. Nice. Okay. Okay. Uh, the Gyaku needs one too, then, right? Uh, Gyaku already needs one. Five. That's a dexterity save. Yeah. Uh, 18. Okay. Uh, 18 is fine. Mara was fine. What Actually, I'm going to Tides of Chaos mine again. Because yes. I just used it. Keep doing it. Yeah. Yep. Five. Okay. Uh, 13. 13. Okay, so again, guys and Harvey one. are the two that, that don't make this one. Yeah. Uh, uh, 11 points of bludgeoning damage, and you're both restrained again. Uh, but then... Sorry. Harmony's turn ends, yeah. and the Warforged Mind Flayer's turn rolls around again. He looks at his button, and he presses the big on-off button, and the tentacles <laughs> splash down nice. into the, under the grate again. Cool. Nice. Uh, and then he like looks up, confused at what he's done, yeah. uh, and sees that he's surrounded, and ends his turn because that was his action. Yes. <laughs> action. Best use of suggestion ever. That was great. Well, I'm in a lot of trouble now. <laughs> I was like, sitting here like, I don't want to burn any of my high level spells yeah. on this. Oh, I have suggestion. That Good works. use. Uh, it's Bianco's yeah. turn. Okay, uh, wall of course is still up. Mm-hmm. Yes. He could get that he's out of this. Problem. You're out already. Oh, that's right. The tentacle yeah, splashed yeah. back down into the um, yeah. brackish. That was the whole point of yeah, that yeah. last turn. <laughs> I guess Bianco's gonna. Can you hold an action to like pounce on the mind player when the wall of force goes down? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then, I, I think you can get through, so. That's Bianco, then it's Thaddeus. <sighs> um, let's see. Thaddeus is gonna go wait by the door for this to end. Okay, so you see again <laughs> a plate above the door uh-huh. and a uh, plate to the right of the door that seems to have the same strange writing on it. I'll see if I can read the plate to the right of the door. Okay, Why make not? an intelligence check. <laughs> read a book, read a book. Uh, 16. 16. Uh, you take two points of psychic damage, uh-huh. and again, 
uh, understand that like it is it is um, advising tentacle movements. Mm -hmm. Can't figure out what they are, but you can read the sign above the door, which says parietal word. Okay. What what what, what parietal, parietal means? You have no idea. Parietal. How does that spell? P a r i e t a l. There you go. Uh, and then it looks like one of these. Hunter, it is your turn. Oh. All right, I will unsheath Kusanagi and make some attacks. Against the mind player. Okay. I'm pretty sure he's to die. I think he's gonna die. But yes, maybe. That's a crit. <laughs> okay. And a 19 on dice, which is a plus 12, so 31, and then a. Let's do with the crit first. And why right. don't you roll it a d20 one more time to just see yes. if it'll lop his head off? Just take it. Oh, not this time. Um, okay, so I'm gonna do three attacks on. Uh, let's see here, that is a D10, so... That is 12 plus 10, so 22 plus 21, so that's 43. 43 points of damage. Magic and slashing. Uh, you cleave him in half, and he just, like, one side of him falls one way, one side of him falls the other way. <laughs> and I'll, like, grab the remote before it clatters to the, the ground. ground. Catch the remote. That is the next thing. I knew it would take <laughs> All right. Uh, and uh, the room goes quiet, other than the slight sloshing of the black liquid beneath the grate. Cool. I'm going to use telekinesis to start destroying the rest of these tanks. Uh, how so? Like, I mean, I'm going to pick up one of the mind flare statues that I knocked over and use it as a oh, like bat, club. and just <laughs> crash through all the glass and just. Yeah. That's what I'm going to spend the next five minutes doing. Mara, why don't we wait here until the splash has died down? Wish I could tell. That's like the funnest ever. Yeah, well, I mean, you guys are basically right. next to. Don't it. you still have that? Um, yeah, that is just going to go over here. Feeling? Together. <laughs> the the, the, Gall the Gallagher splash zone. The splash zone, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm going to wait by the wall, of course, uh, until the splashes are done. I'm, I'm pretty sure that wall, of course, is. It still exists. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. He didn't cast it, because if he did, oh, I would have right. been able to counter you're right, it. You're right. yeah. You could dispel it, though. How are you supposed to get through that? I exactly. Think, I'm guessing uh, we have Can't to break this last magic? one. Uh, I could try, but well, I'm trying to save this one. Don't bother yet. Don't bother yet. It's fine. We'll just wait for this. So we break. Uh, Harmony, roll a, you can roll an Arcana check. This is kind of your jam. Yeah. <laughs> the Grand Slam. The Grand Slam jam. <laughs> uh, 24. Oh, good. easy. Um, you, whether it was in your lessons with Seal or in just like passive reading you read during one of your forays into a wizard's tower throughout your adventures, um, you know a couple things that are special about like the Wall of Force spell. Mm -hmm. Um, one of which being is that it is immune to dispel magic. Oh, okay. Uh, however, it can be destroyed by a disintegrate spell. Which? Oh, which uh, I can The other be... thing you know is that typically, uh, it has a duration of about 10 minutes, oh, and then yeah. it should fade. Yeah. That's not, yeah, yeah, not, not going to waste the disintegrate break the room. Room. Let's then. Yeah, let's just break let's, the room first. I'll spend 10 minutes breaking all the things in this room, and then by the time I'm done breaking everything, there's one yeah. Mara, pillar. You, you can try doing this one while she's Yeah, you can be attacking that with your bling. <laughs> uh, can I search the Mind Flayer body to see if you have anything else on him? Or? Yeah. Okay. Roll an investigation check. Um, and then, Mara, did you want to destroy the canister? Why not? Okay. I also think, can I just point out the irony that I am using the ring that I stole from Oren to destroy the rest it of the It did occur body. to me. <laughs> 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 this is my favorite use of the stasis ring. 22. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay, just give me a second. <laughs> Magnesis for anything? You're right, yeah. Magnesis. <laughs> <laughs> this is so satisfying. Yes. I forgive you for everything you've done to me. <laughs> wow, you can't get to this one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, how, how long does it take Mara to smash that one door with her blade? With her blade pin, uh, maybe five minutes or so? Blade pin's not a proper weapon. You just like <laughs> slowly. I love so <laughs> this. And I'm, I'm like, I love the visual of her sitting there really, really hard, and, and then she like does it. Like, I feel like what I would do is I would like search the mind player and hear like clang, 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 and then I'm like, kiss a doggy. I'm like, I just, uh, I guess she's, she's having fun. Okay. She does it, and she looks up, and all of the other ones have also been. My, yeah. my other question, I guess, is like, once that 
canister smashes, does the liquid just kind of like flood around the ankles? It That's why I didn't want to bring the wall it. Of force? Uh, There's no, green, right? it would flow down oh, to the yeah. lack yeah. of water yeah. below. Thank goodness. Yeah. Um, say, however, the bodies do slump, and the floor is covered with naked horn. I want to. I want to check one of the bodies to see if it's dead now that it's out of the liquid, or if we're gonna have to okay. go around. Okay, we'll take. It we'll take care of that in just a second. You rolled an investigation check. On Twenty-two. It. Uh, you rifle through its robes, um, and it had on it. Um, <laughs> uh, nothing of interest. Okay. Unfortunately. That's fine. Yep. It has its robes, which are black, but they aren't marked with like the eye or any or the hands or anything like that. They're just black robes. Okay. Um, and then underneath it is just a warforged body and then the attached mind flavor head. Um, okay. you wanted to roll a medicine check yes. on the bodies? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Three. <laughs> A lot of adrenaline going on. That was on, a natural tell. one. <laughs> um, well, you know that there's, you know. How do humans work? <laughs> I know, I know. You know the basic, you know enough to like check and see there's no pulse or anything like that. Um, so they are not living. But that's about all you know. Hunter, I think we should probably cut off all of their heads just to be sure. Go ahead, Harmony. I've been here for well, a while. Well, you've got that longer. fancy new sword. He's still a little force at this point. Oh, well, I, I, I figured like, the ten minutes would be up, but... <laughs> I'll help you. I don't have to be done. Patty! I'm not comfortable leaving. I'm not doing this. Can I borrow your sword? Nobody can borrow my sword. Well, I don't have a sword. I have this dagger, and this is not very, very good... What is it? Efficient. Just leave him leave a lot of hello in harmony. No, but what if, what if he can still come back to life in these things? Like, they're still whole. How, Thaddeus is going to check one. All right, make a medicine check. <laughs> That's a six. Okay. Not much uh, same as Harmony, you realize that like they are not living, but that's about it. And that's good enough for that. They Thaddeus. technically weren't living before because I like he, his soul is in a different vessel right if now. If they if they could survive outside of the tanks, they wouldn't be in the tanks. I and still Thaddeus feel much there. better if we could just cut all their heads off. I'm not. Good. I am. Okay. All right. So, Mara, okay. this is about when you've broken it with the blanket and the water comes <laughs> splashing out. Make a dexterity saving throw to dodge the naked body. <laughs> Things that only get said in BMW. Can I, like, restrain her? Give her disadvantage. I'm just kidding. Oh, was that? Yeah, I mean, the naked body falls onto Hunter. No! <laughs> <laughs> I made it. Oh, oh, sweat one. squelch. You are now draped yeah, by Yeah, and it goes, and it goes, and it goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Uh, <laughs> yep. His bald head just sliding to the ground. Okay, um, you do it. What is with these guys? I know, they're so squeamish. You think they've never seen a battle before. And then the wall of force comes down. Like, Come on, Hara. <laughs> Let's go. I'll open the door with that. Is. Okay. He's that, more productive. Hunter, do you have a sword I can borrow? No. I probably do. <laughs> I didn't, I'm not asking you. I know, and I was answering you. Pansy. <laughs> <laughs> and I will toss you a short sword here. Darling. I All catch right. it with telekinesis so I don't nail <laughs> okay. myself. I'll help. I have to catch that my breath in a second. Unless you, want, you, unless you want to help me. Um, what's your intelligence? Fourteen. So okay, yeah, I'm gonna go around cutting the heads off and okay. first. It's gruesome and slow work because you're not very so strong. Well, I'm using okay. I'm using telekinesis to oh, okay. manipulate then the yeah. sword. <laughs> yep. Twenty-one. <laughs> Twenty-one. The intelligence. Yep. Uh, you decipher the uh, components. The the tentacle the, positions. Gen, uh, yeah, the tentacle positions required to open it. Um, Were you gonna say the genital position? Because I'm the naked I was gonna say. Uh, I heard you start going gen, and I was like. <laughs> There's a word that I was gonna say that was like. <sighs> that describes this, but then I was like, it not sure how it was pronounced, and I'm gonna look it up now. <laughs> I just heard the G, and you stopped yourself, and I was like, Ethan. I was gonna say genuflection. <laughs> Uh, I think. It does start with for. the judge. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tentacle. I don't say, we wonder why the guys are helping. <laughs> Anyways, that wasn't the word I was going to say. 
<laughs> anyways, anyways. So you determined the genital yeah. position. <laughs> Uh, Don't encourage that either. He brings his thing out. And it wasn't me this time. And you <laughs> easily do that in the door. <laughs> this is open. <laughs> oh, gosh. I wasn't expecting this to be a funny trip to the laboratory, guys. <laughs> nope, I'm out. Nope. <laughs> <sighs> Having too much fun over here. Apparently. <sighs> so this is the what room again? Right to the right to the I don't think I appreciate you enough. <laughs> <laughs> Not what you said. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. As you look into this room, uh, you are greeted by another seemingly empty room. Okay. Uh, it seems to be a place where experimentation was done, uh, and you can see that there are there's basically a large uh, metal box in the like corner to the left, that thing, yep, with steps leading up to it, uh, and then there's a work table in the center uh, with a like uh, medical gurney next to it, uh, that rectangular thing there, uh, and on top of the medical gurney. Uh, Gurney is a word, right? It sounds yes, really weird right. to me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm self-conscious about my words now. Especially G words. <laughs> yep. Gurney. Um, the gurney is, set off again. The gurney is more like a, a, a moving bed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this one, the, yeah, it's got the components. Like our wheels. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, on top of it is a, uh, a human body of some kind, but you can see its skull has been opened and its brain is uh, present there. And then the table in the center of the room is kind of covered with all sorts of instruments and things like that. Um, like tools, not, not musical instruments. Um, the trombone just lying down there. And then the there chair. are shelves lining the walls, and these ones seem to contain uh, bugs and um, spiders and uh, like things in larval states, as well as like lizards. Um, all sorts of like mm. small critters like that, preserved in the same sort of multicolored liquid that you saw in the other rooms. Mm. Do you suppose well, they're doing those? Well, That's the first non-brain related thing I've seen in this whole place. Is the body male or female? Uh, it, it tells about some genitals. <laughs> How can we tell if it's male or female? I just want to know if it was like the brain. Um, no, the brain's still there. It's, no, the brain's still there. It's, but body is covered and you can really only see its head and the brain so like there's nothing to tell you male or female okay from not, the body like, do we recognize <laughs> not, really yeah. no it seems to be like a nondescript body of some okay kind. uh very clearly uh elder haven reaches nationality mm -hmm. but you can tell that based on like skin tone and things like that mm -hmm. but other than that you don't know at all see this one. Okay. um are all the creatures in the shelves alive do you want to go walk around and look? No. <laughs> you should check for traps first, Hunter, before you go inside that room. Yeah, I guess. Look at what almost Cautiously to this one. looking around to see if there's any other traps or anything. Okay. Roll a perception check. Okay. That is a. 28. 28. Um, looking around the room, you don't spot any creatures. Um, you do see, sorry, I forgot to say, there's another doorway on the other side of the room. Right here, yes. Um, and the only other thing you notice with that is that there are also, there's a jar, uh, basically like almost obscured by the tools that take up most of the table. There's also a jar on the table, which is open, um, and it seems to be like half filled with some sort of critter, like bug. Half or filled with like the critter. Yeah, that's yep. weird. Okay, so yeah, I guess after addressing the um, doorway, I would go in. The one other thing is that you notice like uh, a cold mist rolling uh, off of the box, the big like oh. box. In yeah, the we, we can't see into that from this. Picture. No, it, it rises up off the like. Um, you really missed that. It's a box with like a like a ten foot it's wall right. going up. Like, so it is raised off the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Are you there? Any yeah, well, are you there? Okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, I don't really have a way to 
look into that safe without actually going there myself. Um, <laughs> well, shall we go in? You first. All right. I will enter the room. Okay. There is eerie silence as you step across. Start walking the in. Floor. Is my stealth check still active? Test without a trace. It's concentration if you pass. I haven't been hit yet, so <laughs> I'm guessing that's. So yeah, it's still active. Okay. So I will <laughs> carefully go in quietly. One I'll... thing I would say though is like, you were fairly confident in your stealth, but like, the Warforged Mind Flayer in the previous room definitely seemed to know you were there like before you even entered the room. Like mm. he was hiding and waiting. Yeah. Okay. So I guess they didn't know. That's fine. Anyways, I'll make my way for shelf like I was originally going to and see if the creatures are alive. Okay. Uh, roll a nature check. Okay. Where is the shelf you can They just sort of line the entire wall. Ah, if, nature. If nothing happens to him when he enters the room, I'm gonna go look at <laughs> go up the steps. Twenty one. Um all of the creatures in the room seem to be like in in the jars seem to be dead and preserved. Um, and as you go down the line you see like cockroaches, um, you see centipedes, you see spiders, you see all kinds of different bugs. Um, you see also uh, amphibians, like, like frogs, and there's also like salamanders, things like that, that are just preserved in these different jars. With this nature check, can I also maybe determine why I selected this, these species of animal or these creatures? Um, it's a little unclear by looking at the selection. Like similarities or something? Or... I have an idea. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a little unclear. So I, I'm I'm contemplating about that as Thaddeus is doing his thing, I guess. I'll go Thaddeus. to the work desk too. Sure. Just... Yeah. Thaddeus, you ascend the steps mm -hmm. uh, and peer down into this empty, like uh, <clears throat> fifteen foot by by fifteen foot by fifteen foot um, box. Sorry, it's not empty. Uh, it would be empty if it were not full of bodies uh, uh, that seem yeah. to be frozen in some sort of cryogenic oh, state. That's... Uh, and the cold mist that rolls up is evidence of that. Uh, these are not orange bodies. No, they are uh, human, all of them. Uh, are they also missing, like, half of their skulls? Nope. Oh, so these are fresh ones. <laughs> well, they're frozen. They're well. not fresh. Preserved. It's good. It's fresh. Flash frozen. Flash frozen. Uh -huh. Okay. They became all their vitamins. Fresh, never frozen. Uh, and then are you just gonna sort of look down at it, or are you gonna do? Uh, that is steps off and says, "I nobody looking to here. It's kind of gross. <laughs> this whole place is gross." Yes, thank you. <laughs> After what I've seen, I don't think I trust your description of gross as being actually gross. Want to go take a look, Carmen? No, I'm gonna investigate. The I, think, I don't think she could see above it, actually. <laughs> I, I the stairs. stairs. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, so at the workbench, um, you see basically all these tools and things covering it, as well as the one jar of some sort of bug that is like half open, is open and there it's like half full and there's some scattered across the desk as well. Are there any paperwork or research notes or anything, or is it just... Uh, not here. Are there any drawers to rifle through? Nope. It's just, it's just, just like, like a, a table. table. Yep. Oh, it's usually going to be. That is true. But we need that then. Um, um, but if you want to roll a nature check as you sort of look at the table. Oh, okay. 17. Uh, each of the, like, the insects that are on the table that um, came out of this open jar were a uh, type of cockroach, it looks like. Um, and none of them have heads. Uh, and as you sort of notice that, um, you look around the workbench a little bit closer. And you see like, um, like bits of insect here and there, and like insect guts and things like that across that general area, um, almost as if like a tiny bomb went off in each of the insects' heads, and they just exploded. Hmm. Similar um, to what happened with the tengu when the tengu died. Kind of. I want to look around and see if I can find if any of the specimen jar from the walls contains something that looks like a tadpole. Hmm, okay, yeah, uh, roll a perception check. Okay. So, uh, 18? Um, you do find, uh, several tadpoles of, like, um, frogs and things like that. 
uh, things that are not terribly out of the ordinary, mm -hmm. but you come to a uh, series of jars that have been placed on a top shelf, and you just barely managed to spot them up there. Um, and they look to be tadpole-like, but they have these this strange, almost like fish-like quality to them. Like they have these tiny little scales mm. on them as well, and they also have. Um, uh, I, need, I need to find a picture. Hold on, give me a second, so that I can actually describe this thing. Yeah. Um, D and D Beyond, why do you change how things are laid out? I just got used to how everything was laid out. Oh, are they changing again? They made these really cool Mega Megamans, which are great, but I'm not used to them yet. Yeah. Um, I basically look everything up in the general search bar. Yeah, I just can't spell the thing I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> is it phalanges? There we go. Uh, so it is like almost fish-like in that it has these like small scales to it. Uh, and it has like they, the, their little tails culminate in in fins. Mm -hmm. um, they also have these big buggy eyes on the side. And what catches your eye the most is that they have these four like tentacles that come up around uh, the front of their bodies, mm -hmm. um, and basically surround a mouth that is filled with tiny little teeth all the way around. Uh, and they look very unnatural. Where, where are you, do I find these? Uh, sort of on one of the far walls, like up on one of the highest shelves. Okay. I'll say, Harmony, I have a, I have a job for you. Okay. You see these shelves? These jars up there? Mm -hmm. I'll point to all, to all the jars I can see if I have a Yeah, there's like three or four of these yeah. jars. How would you like to destroy these as thoroughly as possible? <laughs> Should I just knock them off the shelf? More than that, I think it's called for here. Well, I left the statue in the other room. <laughs> I'll get it. <laughs> but I still have I still have the sword that you gave me, so I can use uh, yeah, the sword. Well, yeah, sure. I'll telekinesis the sword up there and start. <laughs> <laughs> um, liquid and uh, tadpoles of various sorts like fall to the ground with a wet squish, and you can now see, get a really close look at these things. And they would probably be um, like. They, like two of them might fit in the palm of a hand. They're, they're not that big, mm -hmm. uh, but they are very sickly and uh, abnormal looking things as they flop to the ground there. Should I burn them? Uh, after I step on them, you can burn them. <laughs> and Thaddeus is keeping an eye on the door to this as we're doing all this, mm -hmm. just to see if he gets a reaction out of anybody. Okay. And he's going to start stomping on them. Okay. Then... As he stomps, I'll firebolt them. Uh, each of you hears in your brain a psychic howl. Just, no! No! Why would you do that? You'll pay for that. <laughs> and then just, you feel this seething rage <clears throat> that just constantly uh, radiates throughout each of your heads. There's still one left if you want to come out, that is, shouts. You feel the rage, but the, the voice goes quiet after that brief outburst of anger. That is, shrugs and stomps the last one. What about these bodies inside there? Should we pull them out so they come? No, I don't, I don't think. I don't know if any of us have the expertise necessary to bring them back yet. We don't want to bring them back, but I don't want them to be used either. Well, if we if we, we take care of them a little more, if we take care of them for there'll here, be no one left. Right. Right. We can always send people in here to give them a proper burial later. And then, yeah, the room is, is quiet again. You can all still feel oh, like the, the burning anger in the back of your brain. We so. agree on something. <laughs> we, we found something we can bond we over. We found something to bond over. Brown wants to oh, kill something. Now I we know. Leave. Now he <laughs> wants to mutilate some horses. <laughs> yeah, I don't get it. The other ones were in jars, too. Yeah. <laughs> what do you guys want to do? Can you guys the door? I guess. Do we have to read it? Yeah, see what the next yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. So, so once we finish here? up in here, um, I guess I'm the doorman, so I'll uh, address the door again. <laughs> I'll, I'll do my you. best. No, oh, okay. Harm will help you. No, I said Patty will help you. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, she, then I'll let you. I knew. I knew it was uh, coming. That's not very good. No. I don't think I did it this time. Let's say 13. Okay. Uh, both of you feel the stab of pain in your head as you take two points of psychic damage. Ouch. And uh, as per usual, when you've had trouble reading these plaques, uh, you understand that uh, the plaque above says 
um, occipital lobe, uh, but you do not directly understand the tentacle gestures you need to make. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Shall we try again? I know, might as well. We're gonna have to, gonna have to get to the store sometime. Right. I'll help this time. Okay, sure. good. I'm tired of taking this stupid second damage. <laughs> Um, I wonder if this is the final room. <laughs> oh, yeah. I wonder if this is the final room or not. I'm not sure. Oh, I don't know. It's either the final or the next one. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? I got 11. An 11? Okay. Uh, the two of you take one point of psychic damage. <laughs> Ouch. I'll take it. Uh, and between the fragmented information that you gained last time and the fragmented information that you get this time, uh, you think you probably know the correct... Um, gestures to make with the tentacles, uh, but it will be a little bit challenging, so you'll have to make a roll for it. Okay. We'll give it a shot, I guess. I don't think there's, don't there's any drawbacks of trying. Um, yeah, we'll give okay. it a roll. So whoever's going to do it needs to make a dexterity check. And it has to be one Can of the Can it be three. him and I'm helping him? Because yeah. mm -hmm. I got half the information. Alright. Try again. Uh, it's a 15. Okay, 15 is what you needed. Woo! Uh, so you move the tentacles uh, together, okay. barely managing ready, to everyone. coordinate the correct movements. Mm -hmm. The doors hiss open. Oh boy. I stand behind Hunter. <laughs> I mean, I don't have orange juice. Orange slime. Also. Orange slime. If anyone's covered in orange slime, it's this one metal. <laughs> It's me. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and you see before you uh, another room with another set of doors on the opposite side, uh, similarly sealed. Um, and in this room, what you see is a device in the center of the room, a massive device uh, that takes up a big portion of the center of the room. And it has, it's basically made of metal. Uh, and it culminates in this dish-like shape at the top, which is kind of rotating around. Uh, and the, there is a console attached to it at its base, which is basically just a series of what looks like brains. Um, one on each side of it, like in a, in a triangle position. So there's three brains mm -hmm. on this console. Uh, and then there are wires that just run up to this thing and connect to it. Uh, and then yeah, that is all you see in this room. And then what? That's all we see. Oh, that's all we see. Okay. Huh? Well, are the brains part of the console, or are they... They are, like, music? built into the device. Check the traps? Yeah, I can check. If anyone wants to help me. Sure. <clears throat> yeah. Let's say... 26. Uh, you do not see anything in this room that would constitute a trap, magical or otherwise. Or any figures or other things that are alive or nope. nothing. Are they this room looks clear. Other than the device that sort of mechanically rotates around um, unceasingly, this room is rather quiet. Okay. And also dark. Yeah. It's looking very <laughs> Should I while we're still hanging out here? Send the short sword in and stab the brains. We might need the brains intact to operate something. Maybe. I mean, I, I was able to make contact with one of the brains in the shelf before. Okay, it, so... Tactic. Well, do we need to use this for anything? This machine? Do I have time to meditate with my sword right now? Um, Is that like a short rest? Thing? Yes. Then that would be like an hour. Half an hour. Or so, do you want to take half an hour in here? I mean, I don't, but I do. <laughs> so I can get what this Guardian of Nature. But then you also wouldn't be able to use it for another seven days. So that's yeah, but we have to travel around. That's you true. won't have time to recharge it. What, is, what does that do? It turns me into a ninja cat man. What? <laughs> <laughs> you find it it gives him a bunch of like nature-based powers. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know how much I used that would be in like, this weird artificial laboratory. It's more for when we have to fight for... I feel um, like that's something you probably should have prepared when before we entered here during um, our last short rest. Well, now that we know that we're closing in... How long does it last? An hour. And it activates after the short rest, or just whenever you... 
It's at after the short rest. Uh, guard. Guardian. Is it a Xanathar's spell? Uh, I'm not sure what it is. It might be Xanathar's. If not, no. I, I mean, mean we can make do. That's fine. I wouldn't say no to the short rest because I have taken some damage, but. But I mean, it doesn't seem like he's coming out, right? I mean, we taunted him pretty good, so yeah. he's just sitting in there. So, it's right here, at the top. This oh, I don't know. Oh, okay. I was just wondering bit. why you wanted it now, suddenly. It is very good. It, like, increases his speed, gives him dark vision. And it's, like, not something that you could have prepared before we came in, and then just activated whenever you wanted it. It's something that... I have to, yeah. Sense. That's... Something that activates on a short rest. Didn't know what this pat, what this was going to be like, so didn't want to just waste it walking around every single room, and then mm -hmm. it dissipates when we're actually fighting a quarter. I figured this is a good time to do it because he's not coming. So and so I'll, basically, it takes that that take, hour or takes whatever. Takes the short rest time. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then it's only active for an hour after the short rest. And then we can all I guess, a little bit. I guess the question is, do we want to investigate this room first or before the short rest? I was going to do it while you guys were investigating. That well, I mean, level. some of us might also... Oh, sure. Then we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. We can investigate first and then short rest. Mara doesn't yeah. need short rest. <laughs> <laughs> she can investigate. <laughs> Come on, Pinky, let's go. Check it out. Okay, so the group of you are going to file into this room and then start taking a short rest with the exception of Mara, who's going well, to investigate. Well, we've got to investigate the room first. Oh, yeah, let's, okay. invest, let's all investigate the room. You file here. into the room, yeah. and uh, it stays quiet for the moment. I'm going to stay on the other side of the threshold, though. I'm not going to enter the room. Okay. Yeah, if I'm going to rest, I'd, well, I'm meaning for... Hmm. We're all investigating first. We are all investigating. But Harmony, you're staying on the other side? I'm going to stay right on the threshold. <laughs> And watch, just in case. Okay. Something about this room is creepy. Very um, creepy. as you all file in, the dish at the top of it continues to spiral quietly. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just eyebrows going way under. I know. I'm gonna take out. I'm gonna take out Pinky and see if I can <clears throat> sense anything. His brain. Uh, Pinky. His brain activity is strangely quiet. Like he's almost motionless in your in your robes and things like that. So he's just like not doing anything, and you can't hear the constant babble of like hunt, hunt, food, pee, pee okay. that you normally would. I want to go look at this console. Okay. See if we can figure out what it's for. Um, there's like no buttons or screens or anything like that. There's just these three brains in like triangular positions. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can roll an intelligence check if you want to try and figure out what maybe it's doing. Sure. It'd be pretty difficult. Okay. Uh, a 19? Uh, whatever function it's performing, it's doing it like on a constant basis because it is like this constant rotation, but it's really hard to tell what it is without that. Um, what you would also get from that though is that clearly these brains are involved in its operation because there's no other buttons or anything like that. Can I try and make contact with one of the brains like I did before? Like projecting your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah, there's no response. Okay. I still think we should kill the brains and destroy the device, but that's just me. I can't see any purpose for this thing if I can't make contact with the brains, so... Can I what help him try and figure out? If we just bring you one of the brains, or see what happens when we remove one of the brains? Yeah. Now kill it in case we have to put it back real quick? Uh, sure. Be my guest. Sure. Okay, daggers. This is right your idea. <laughs> it's like that scene in so the movie where they like try and put a, a dagger ball. between the seams of the brain in the metal. As you put your hand right up close to it, you feel like this almost like like static electricity between the brain and your hand, um, as if the brain is almost like willing you to make physical contact. <gasps> That's how you control it. There's energy flying between your hand and the brain, just this harmless little tingle. Okay, the so it? I'm gonna tell tell them, whoa, this feels wonky, guys. I think I think it's trying to tell me to to do something to it. What should I have it do? Try try poking it. Hermie, are you still out of the room this whole time? <laughs> I'm standing in the doorway. Okay. Half in, half out. 
Okay, so I'm going to touch it with my pinky. Okay, you touch it with, with your, your rat? Which pinky? <laughs> yeah. with pinky. And okay. uh, the pinky is kind of like pulled into the brain a little bit, and the rest of your hand is pulled down onto the brain and makes contact with it, and then the rest of your fingers are pulled into the like tubes of the brain. Uh, and as that happens, you see before you on the blank metal of the device appear like uh, a screen, which is covered in writing. Um, and uh, let's see, there seem to be two main options that are presented on the screen. Uh, one of them says review past transmissions, and the other one says read new messages. What's and the top uh, you realize as you <laughs> as you stick your fingers into the brain that you can kind of like move your hand back and forth, and it will like tilt between the two options. Who's the brainiac now? Uh, which, which one do you want to do? Read your inbox. No, let's read the past. Since nothing exploded, first. I'm gonna come in so I can okay. see this. Can you come in fully? Mm -hmm. um, Mari, can only you, can only Mara see the screen? Only she can see the screen. Oh, okay. Okay. The rest okay. of nothing comes up. Oh, nothing comes up on the screen. Then mm -hmm. I'm going to stay on the threshold. Okay. Sorry. Okay. I'm going to read the past messages first. Uh, as you do. tilt the thing to there and begin to see, like the screen changes, and all you can see are a list of um, the same message over and over and over again, uh, time stamped with different times, and it seems like this list goes down for a long time, like. Um, it just goes off the screen in front of you. Uh, and the message just says, they are weak. I have found a way to rebuild. The world will be ours again. And this same message just goes down, like off the screen, over and over and over again, repeated time and time again. Um, and as you begin to view those messages, the door, Harmony, the doorway you're standing in, begins to hiss. Uh, and you can at this point choose which side you want to go on to. Can as I it tell you this hold it open? Uh, make a charisma check. Okay. Who's dying for that? That's not me. Get out of the way, please. Okay, so <laughs> they are weak. Are you aware? They are weak. Which way go? And what else? Uh, they are weak. The world will be ours again. I have found a way to rebuild. The world will be ours again. It was a natural one. Only a hunter is allowed to roll once. Let me roll again. Uh, wait. Six. 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 What? Rolled I rolled two in a row, but I've also rolled three that one. It just means you have to choose you and interact. Push out with telekinesis, but whatever force is trying to close this uh, door is stronger than you, and it is closing on you. All right, so you I'll jump to, in. You jump into the room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the door closes with a, a clang of resounding metal, um, and the group of you are now sealed in this room, and there's no further action for the moment. So this message was. An outgoing message that was repeated? It was a past message. Yeah. Okay. Dozens of them, apparently. Yeah, I missed that. Okay, so can I manipulate my hand in the queue to, to read the new one? You go back up a menu and then to uh, read new messages. Yeah. Um, this one goes to jail. I can't remember what the other one's mm. handy one. Well, and you see too. pop up on the screen a single message received within the past few days. Um, which just says, message received, we are coming. And as you read that, there's a hiss of the other door uh, on the opposite side of the room, mm -hmm. um, above which those of you who have been making the checks up to this point uh, can see the uh, plate reads cerebellum. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can see as the doors slide to the side, this room begins to fill with warforged bodies that just spill out oh, crap. Uh, from the room beyond. Um, looking into the room beyond, there's all, all everything's off the table now. Uh, you all catch a glimpse of a space um, bigger than most of the rooms you've passed through so far. Uh, and occupied by these uh, large, I don't know what to call them, um, raised dioceses with stairways on, you can really only see two of them, one in the middle of the room and one at the back, uh, with stairways on all sides of them. On top of the raised dioceses are uh, big glass containers, similar to the ones that uh, Orin was in, but these ones almost look like magically enhanced. They shimmer and gleam. 
<clears throat> and they are filled with this purpley liquid. Um, standing in front of the chamber or the uh, dais that you can see are a number of figures. Uh, you see two large sized warforged, which you faced before on a number of occasions. Uh, and then standing, they are flanking an individual that stands uh, directly between them. A uh, creature that almost at first glance might appear to be a warforged, but uh, you very quickly realize it's definitely just a figure in dark plate armor, just this completely black plate armor that uh, shines with um, like magical essence. Uh, and they are wearing a helmet that completely obscures their face, uh, but it culminates in these uh, decorative Mind Flayer tentacles. Uh, and as your gaze is drawn past the Warforged that are flooding this room, past the large Warforged and the uh, figure in the uh, center of the room, and back up to the dais, you see the most horrifying feature of the room, which is that a massive metallic brain sits within the uh, glass capsule on the dais. Uh, and you can feel emanating from that brain, Kuor's intellect, as it invades each of your brains and says, there, now is your time to die. And we will roll initiative next week. Ah! Because I don't want to start battle yet. Oh. With 10 minutes to go. So the brain is like here? It's on the back or, of the room. Like, like over here somewhere? This back one. So okay. there's like two big ones here and like a figure in the plate armor here. Uh -huh. Is my understanding of it right now. Yeah. And then the big brain back here. Is there now it's time to die? Yeah. Mm. Now it's time to die. Oh no. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. it's amazing. Mother Drain. Mother Drain. Uh, so oh, there is where we'll pick up next week. Oh my god. <laughs> um, so yes, thank you guys for playing. I found the map. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you had fun diving into my weird yeah. psyche. I'm just happy you let me destroy all of those orange. I thought that yes, would be therapeutic. Was, <laughs> it was I really good. Did. It was very good. Um, Thanks for letting me have my wood. <laughs> we'll be back with this Monday, 7 p.m. Pacific time. This episode, if you missed any, will go up on YouTube on... Okay. Oh, man. Upside down roll. That's bad luck. Uh, it will go up on YouTube on Wednesday, so you can check it out there, or you can check out the VOD immediately after. It's really up to you. You've got options. Uh, thank you for tuning in. We'll see you next time. Bye. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.